on streaming services want your attention, you know that. And another way to do that is through original content. So it's creating a valuable marketplace for stories and ideas, whether it's an article that you read or your favorite book series. Well, join me now to talk about Hollywood's rush for intellectual property as Cheddar News is Michelle Castillo. Uh, Michelle, it's great to see you this afternoon. So let's start with how Hollywood is finding inspiration from journalism. I know you spoke to IP Marketplace as Story Scout. How much can an article actually be worth? Story Scout is, for a little background, is a company that was started by Todd Hoffman, and he was a former media rights um, person who, from ICM, and he started this place. One of their big productions was to, uh, they've sold about 200 articles, and one of the big things they've done is Modern Love, which was a New York Times article. Their clients are like Washington Post. And he says that, on average, these articles are getting $7,500 to $10,000 just for the option by these streaming services and media companies. If it actually gets made into a series, you can get $75,000 to $100,000, and you get a $5,000 per episode bonus if it's a TV series versus a movie. That article you just saw from the New York Times, that's actually one deal he brokered when he was at ICM. That actually went for $2 million just for the option rights. If it actually gets made into a series or a movie, the um, publication will actually get a $1 million more. It sounds like a lot of money, but because so many streaming services are competing for rights right now, they are willing to take any IP and also anything they think will have a big following. And that's exactly why we're seeing these articles make a ton of money, especially because if the actual franchises for books and other existing IP can cost way more. Another story they sold from the Washington Post on documents from the Afghanistan war, that went for over a million dollars. So, you know, there's a lot of money to be had in, in just a simple newspaper article. Um, I believe it. I mean, I know Bill and Melinda Gates have spent billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars, just based on, you know, one news story that they've read as well, how that leads them to something else. So back to Hollywood, though. Uh, besides the fact that these stories can serve as inspiration for movies and TV shows, why are they commanding these hefty price tags? You know, it's that idea that you might have read this before, so you might be actually interested in seeing it as a TV series or as a movie. There was a New York Times article that Story Scout actually sold that was about New Orleans and who runs these streets, and that actually became the basis for APB, which is a show on Fox. Um, even Fast and Furious was actually based on an article, believe it or not, but that had nothing to do with the series, definitely weird, but... but it definitely was originated from an article. But if you look at just the franchises and how much money they can make for a lot of these streaming services, think about Marvel and Star Wars and how much that was a draw for Disney Plus. Wizarding World, which was a fought between HBO Max and then now eventually was on Peacock. And those are such big draws for people launching a streaming service that they are just drawing in those viewerships. On top of that, it's not just the box office. It's also all the merchandising, the rights, the spin-offs that you can create from that, that really creates this entire world that can fund things, especially as the content rights get more and more expensive each time. Mm -hmm. um, Michelle, I know if the fan base is the big draw, what does it mean for the price tag of the rights to popular book series um, that you know will be a hit, right? I mean, I think of some of the things that uh, Hello Sunshine, Reese Witherspoon's company had done, and of course they did emanate from books to begin with. You know, that's a great question. Let's talk about Amazon because they're one of the companies that really don't own IP because they weren't a media company to begin with. And they, uh, a few years back, they bought the rights to five seasons of Lord of the Rings. Now, we know that had a famous book series, and we know that the movies are international hits, but they paid $250 million just to be able to have five seasons of that series. On top of that, the first season is going to cost $465 million to make. This is the only image that's been out, and they've had the rights to this for quite some time. That just was released, I think, this week. The idea really being, like, they are going to invest near a billion dollars just to bring this one series to light, because I think it'll be such a draw. Amazon also paid north of $8 billion for MGM, and the one main reason for that was because MGM owns the rights to James Bond, which, if you remember that list earlier, was one of the top five movie-grossing franchises. So even though Amazon will just get a portion of that James Bond library, uh, they don't own the full rights, it's enough for them to bet on it because they believe will draw more people into their prime streaming service. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, lastly, I know a lot of streaming companies, they're owned by media companies that have a history of owning franchises. So what does it mean for streaming companies like Netflix, for instance, that don't have that legacy? 
So you have the companies like Amazon who are willing to spend, and Netflix is willing to spend too. They bet a lot on a lot of things, including The Witcher recently. But you're not necessarily guaranteed a hit and that fan following if you're starting with true original content. In fact, about out of the top 100 movies each year, 50 were actually based on previous IP, according to Storyscape. But um, one of the things that I, is important to note is sometimes you can have that breakout hit. Netflix's billion-dollar potential franchise will probably be closest to something from Stranger Things. We already know that even though they might end the series in a few seasons, I think they're only planning out five. There's already talk about a spin-off. We know they have games, mobile games that they're thinking about. There's definitely franchise um, items that you can buy, merchandise. So that makes the series even worth more than just the hit show. It makes it a bigger thing that they can own in the future. And they're just betting that they can have more of these. I know recently they did a casting call on Instagram asking people to join their reality TV shows. Again, it's something that they also own and operate. So really looking to try to find that big hit. But it is a riskier strategy, especially if there's not a built-in fan base. There could be high reward, though. And I think that's what Netflix is betting on. But again, there's a lot of content out there. So it's hard to tell which one is really going to stick with the vibe to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much for that report. That's Cheddar Senior reporter, Michelle Castillo.